if your father was a dictatorial, mean, a demanding father, and then you go to this church and there's this guy up there, you don't even realize it, but you're attracted to him because he's so like what you're used to. You'd think the thing you'd want to avoid is anybody demanding or rigid or something like that, but we get so used to things that they become the very thing that we crave because it makes us a little bit, in a strange way, comfortable. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. We're going to go a little bit deeper today. I want to talk to you about something. I wrote a book about this with Jack Felton. In 1991, Toxic Faith came out. It was on the cover of Publishers Weekly. They said that it was an instant classic in religious writing. And I have loved getting phone calls all my uh, all, all over the years. People saying, I got a hold of that book, and it really helped me understand what our church was going through or what I was going through. And so here's kind of a, a simple uh, explanation of what we're talking about when we talk about toxic faith. Um, by the way, I want to mention one more thing. Bill Clinton, this book came out when Bill Clinton was president. And um, he has his portrait made. And he's got a stack of books in the portrait. And one of the books, uh, the Toxic Faith, is mentioned in the book. The guy was critical of it. He said, I can't believe people are making fun of our faith. Well, I wasn't making fun of the faith. The guy never read it. <laughs> and he had written a book on integrity. So I always thought that was amusing to me. All right, now we're back. So Toxic Faith is something that exists that is the last thing in the world that God wants for us. But you see it all over Scripture. Now, an extreme, easy to understand example would be worshiping other gods in the Old Testament. Obviously, that's poisoned faith. Aaron led the folks in worshiping a golden calf. Ridiculous. Poisonous. Uh, it wasn't the real thing. So anything that isn't the real thing, of course, is toxic faith. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about churches that get formed and people that fall into them, and it's anything but a relationship with God. It's something that's more of a rigid, demanding religion. It could be, uh, the, sor the source of it could be a lot of different things. But here are some things that happen when we become subject to getting involved in a toxic faith system. And during this series, I'm going to talk to you about some roles, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the beliefs of it. But people that are susceptible to, like a dictator running a church, accountable to no one, telling everybody what to do. And in the book, I, I write about a guy in Hawaii who had a church. He was even telling people what toothpaste they should use. He was the one that demanded if you wanted to get married, you had to come ask his permission. Well, there's only one thing to do in a church like that. Find the door and walk out of it. But people stay stuck because maybe they had rigid, demanding parents. And when some guy comes along like this, that's what they're used to. And so they stay and they kind of get hooked into being close to this guy that acts so powerful. And it can really kind of become a little mini cult based on the belief in the guy, not belief in God. Um, a lot of times people that get involved in these have had some kind of major hurt and disappointment that they've never grieved. And so they come along and, and then somebody welcomes them in. Pretty soon they're not just welcomed in, they're kind of pinned in. They can't get out because uh, these folks are psychologically damaging to you, demanding shame inflicting because they want to control you. And then folks that don't have the ability to see themselves as worthy of being smart or 
being intelligent or able to make their own decisions. They just, they become so susceptible with this low self-worth of somebody else telling them what really they should be able to figure out themselves. Or they're victims of abuse. Imagine how susceptible you would be if your father was a dictatorial, mean, a demanding father, and then you go to this church and there's this guy up there. You don't even realize it, but you're attracted to him because he's so like what you're used to. You'd think the thing you'd want to avoid is anybody demanding or rigid or something like that, but we get so used to things that they become the very thing that we crave because it makes us a little bit, in a strange way, comfortable. So those are some of the folks that are susceptible to getting in a toxic faith religion. Now, what would you see uh, in this person? You'd see them meeting the demands of a leader versus responding to God and feeling like you're doing something because this is what God wants you to do. That's what you would see there. Um, You would see people being manipulated, controlled by a figure. You would, well, we'll talk about some of the beliefs, but uh, you'll see this guy that's leading it has all sorts of beliefs he wants you to believe, such as that he has special needs or special powers that other people don't have. One of the examples in a toxic faith relationship or or church is what we saw this past year. There were people who claimed to be speaking for God and prophesying that Donald Trump would win the election. Now, prophets have to be 100% right or they're not prophets. They're frauds. They're fakes. So these people proved when Donald Trump wasn't elected, whoever they were listening to, it sure wasn't God. So uh, you want to be sure that the folks that are telling you stuff are actually accurate, authentic, and they're right on 100% of the time. Now, when we get together again, I'm going to talk to you about some roles that people play in a toxic faith system. You might see yourself in one of these roles, or you might see somebody that you really care about. In the meantime, if you want a copy of the book, you can order it at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. It is called Toxic Faith. The subtitle, Understanding and Overcoming Religious Addiction. Yes, we actually get hooked in like an addiction to the religion versus having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Steve Arterburn here. Call us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. See you next time. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.